What's up you guys? Jason here, 615 Fishing, once again. Hey, if you like fishing content and outdoor content in general, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you will be notified whenever I post new content. And hey, make sure to stay till the end of the video because I am doing a giveaway. Hey, and in this episode, I'm going to show you my feet. Yep, that's right. But this isn't some crazy foot fetish video, something crazy like that. It's about these guys. That's right. Sandals. Kind of love these guys, kind of don't. I've been fishing with sandals for a long, long time. That includes co-angling on a boat. That includes wading in a creek or fishing from the bank. I just wore sandals all the time. But in this episode, I'm going to tell you why you should not wear sandals when you're fishing. So here we go. These are the big reasons why I probably will not be wearing sandals ever again. I can't see a reason why I would, especially if I'm fishing. So number one, sunburn. That's right, if you're wearing sandals and you're out on a boat deck all day long or on a creek side, that sun is beating down, and if you forget, and all of us do, if you forget to put a little bit of that SPF on your feet, which most of us don't really do your feet, we do our backs and our arms and our face, right? But not our feet. You will get serious sunburn. Now, in this image, this was a week after I had burned my feet. So that this is after a week's worth of recovery. They were super, super red, and I forgot my SPF, my sunscreen, one day, <laughs> right? So sunburns are uncomfortable whether they are on your shoulders or especially on your feet. Now, what that does, and that leads to number two, you get to some seriously weird tan lines. Now, I made a joke for a long time because I've been wearing sandals for so long that I called my feet the bikini feet because you get these crazy little bikini tan lines Ew, sexy. on your feet from the shape of the sandals. And it looks kind of ridiculous if you go barefooted or you put on a pair of regular flip-flops. Bikini feet aren't cool, so that's number two. Number three, if you're wading in a creek, you're still going to get pebbles and rocks and whatever else are going to get in between your feet and the sole of the sandal. You're just gonna have that, it's gonna be constant. I caught myself like shaking my feet out, you know, trying to get that one pebble to get out from in between my foot and the sandal. That's just uncomfortable. There's no need for that. So that's number three. Number four, bushwhacking. So in an upcoming video, when I go fishing with the uh, hobo fisherman, we did a little bit of bushwhacking. And if you're bushwhacking in sandals, Man, there's all kinds of stuff hitting your feet. You're, you're, you're hitting rocks that you're not expecting to. Lots of thorn bushes and things you've got to deal with. Not to mention if, if something were to bite you on the foot, uh, sandals leave your feet unprotected. So if you're bushwhacking while you are creek fishing, that's a no-no. So let's go to the next one. Dirty toenails. I know that's a little silly, right? But it's true. As you're walking, in a creek with sandals, right? And your, your foot and you walk through, as you get to this point, all this dirt right here is pushing up into your toenails. You come home, wash your feet off, your feet look nice and clean, but your toenails look like you've been hanging out in a garbage dump. So that's no bueno, we gotta fix that, right? That's gotta go. Next, and this is a huge one. I know you've all seen the horror story or heard the horror stories, and seeing the horror photos of guys with hooks in their face, in their arm, in their back, and in their feet. So if you've got sandals on, there's not much of a layer of protection for your feet. If you set the hook on that imaginary fish that we've all done, don't lie, that crankbait comes back at you 300 miles an hour decides to fall on your foot, you got a hook in your foot, there's no layer of protection. That's a good reason not to be wearing sandals while you're fishing. Let's go to the next one. 
climbing fences. I mentioned earlier about bushwhacking. If you're pushing through the woods and whatnot, going through stickers, that's one thing. But let's say you get to a fence and you've got to climb a fence. Sandals aren't the best, most stable footwear to be wearing for climbing fences, not to mention jumping down and landing on the other side and who knows what kind of terrain you're gonna be in. So let's not climb fences in sandals. Next, and I think this is a funny one, but I got a buddy of mine who swears that if you're wading in a creek and you can't see the bottom, there's a chance, albeit slim, there's a chance that there's a turtle down there and he's gonna bite your toe. Now, however ridiculous this may sound, it's plausible, right? A turtle could bite your toe. If your toe's right in his face and you're wiggling your toes, water's muddy, you don't know what's down there. You could have a turtle chomping down on that big toe and that might not feel very good. So let's not wear sandals in the creeks anymore. <laughs> all right, so those are all cons for wearing sandals and I can't believe I ever wore these. Now that I look back and I see all of the cons of wearing sandals, I'm never gonna wear them again in the creek. But there was one pro that I always leaned on is that is your feet dry out so much quicker. It's one thing if you're wearing a pair of, uh, let's say hiking boots or something like that, get in the creek, get back out. Now they're all soggy, you've got to switch to something. You're more than likely gonna put on flip flops or sandals at that point. But if you wear sandals in the creek and you get out, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes later, your feet are gonna be dry. That's just the way it is. That's the way it is with sandals. So that's the one pro that has kept me wearing sandals all this time, even though I've got, what, eight reasons why you probably shouldn't. So now that you've heard me give you all the cons for not wearing sandals when you're fishing, you probably all think I'm crazy for ever having worn them in the first place. What would you wear now? So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm gonna rotate out my hiking boots. I'm always buying, hiking boots are my number one shoe. That's my daily wear. So. I'm gonna switch out my hiking boots. I got an old pair of hiking boots. I'm gonna have a new pair of hiking boots. Wear my new ones for my daily wear, wear my old ones in the creek. It's gonna protect you from the pebbles. It's gonna protect you from the turtles. It's gonna protect you from those treble hooks that we all know get stuck in random places. Now, if you're fishing from a boat, not necessarily in a creek or on the side of a lake, fishing from the bank, but if you're on a boat, it doesn't matter if you're wearing hiking boots or what. I still wouldn't wear sandals or flip-flops, even though you see a lot of boaters and co-anglers do that. I probably still wouldn't do it. You still have all of these eight cons for reasons not to wear them. However, a lot of boaters are persnickety about their boat. I'm a co-angler, so I wanna make sure that I make the boater happy at all possible. So shoes for being a co-angler on a bass boat might be something like the non-scuff variety. You can get them from Columbia and several other different brands, but that is an option for shoes to wear when you're out on the boat. Definitely not sandals. Well, thanks. That is another episode in the books. Here we are. I am still giving away the Lurlock hat. So I have learned since then, since my first episode, and it's been a while since I've gotten this one out, but since my first episode, I've learned that it's going to be really difficult to get to that first 100 subscribers, which is what I'm shooting for. I'd like to get to that 100 quicker rather than longer. So I'm going to add a little bit to it. I'm going to add the lure lock decal to go with the hat. So I'm up in the ante just a little bit, but I'm up in the ante. So what I need you to do is subscribe to the channel. If you subscribe to the channel, that is going to put you in the drawing for the hat and the decal, and who knows what else might get added in a future episode, hint, hint. So when I get to 100, I'll look at all the people who are subscribed. Make sure to allow your subscriptions to be seen. There is a function in YouTube that basically hides your subscriptions. Unhide that if you want me to see it or send me an email, either way. But once I get to 100, I'll do the draw of all the subscribers and you'll get whatever is piling up as far as giveaways. Thanks again for watching this episode of 615 Fishing. Make sure to stick around, hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications bell so you'll be notified of the next episodes of which I have many and I've got some turn back time videos as well. So we'll see you next time on 615 Fishing.